Hi guys, Joe from Prepper in the Woods here, and this is going to be a different kind of video. This is going to be an interview with a fellow prepper. I'm going to do interviews with preppers and bushcraft people just to mix it up a bit, and I want to see other people's points of view on certain things. So um, this is Mark Boyle. He's been a prepper for a really long time. He has a Facebook group called uh, Prepper Guy. Also, PrepperGuy.com is his website, but I'll put all the links in the description box below so you guys can check him out. I've asked him 15 questions, so it's going to be, I'm asking him a question, he's going to have his answer, and then you guys can sit back and enjoy the watch. Okay, hope you like it. Thanks for watching. How long have you been a prepper? Well, boy, that's, that, that goes back to 1973, 74, when uh, me and my brother had read a book. Well, he did most of the reading. I just got filled in on it. Um, it was called The Late Great Planet Earth. And as all doomsday scenarios, the world was going to end for some cataclysmic event. And so we both decided to sell everything we had and to move way out into the mountains and get us 80 acres and live off grid and survive the coming collapse. Well, here it is 40 plus years later. From what I can see, the world is still around. But that's what got me into prepping and being aware that having some food and extra stuff around and being prepared for that wasn't such a bad idea. That didn't quite pan out, but all in all, it was a great learning experience. What are you prepping for? I don't really prepare for any type of event. Um, what I do is prepare for survival. And it is my opinion that any number of things could happen to us in our lives that would be a Tiat Waki moment or the end of the world as we know it. Well, I am part of the we, and so the end of the world as I know it could be a lot of things. It could be as simple as breaking down out in the middle of nowhere, getting hurt, um, something like that. It would change my life, uh, death in the family, or something tragic like that. So I like to prepare for just everyday bad things happening. In the big picture, I kind of uh, prepare by being aware of what's going on around us. And a lot of my uh, videos and podcasts are on all range of subjects from nutrition to politics to, to the economy, because any one of those things could potentially be the end of the world as we know it or a shit hit the fan event so that's kind of what i prepare for is just an all-around bad bad thing happening to all of us on more of a national level or even a global level so no matter what it is whether it's an economic collapse or a pandemic or a social collapse or an emp there's a, a certain set of things that will always happen that will bring about bad things. You'll, whether it's an economic collapse or a pandemic, you're going to end up with a without rule of law situation where police are overwhelmed. If it's an EMP, the communications are lost and the police are overwhelmed that much quicker. But eventually, if, if something really bad happened to where it went on for more than a week or two and it and it took place on a national level then what we're going to find is that uh eventually the memo is going to get out to all the bad people that the police can't respond and then it's just going to cascade down from there so i want to be able to bug out on a moment's notice i want to be ready at a moment's notice and so I prepare for shit hitting the fan, but not a specific thing because I don't like having all my eggs in one basket if I'm planning for uh, nuclear bombs and some kind of catastrophic war like that. Um, then I would have a lot of equipment just specific for radiation and bombs and stuff like that. But then what if it turns out that it's actually an economic collapse? then I, I don't have anything for that. So I just assume whatever's gonna happen 
is going to be bad and it's going to affect us on a very personal level. So we need to have our house in order and therefore whatever it may be that happens, we can be more ready for it. This one might be a tricky one, but what would you recommend in a bug out bag? Um, that's a trick one because uh, everyone has their own things. Um, a bug out bag to me would be some essential tools for uh, my area. Um, Dave Canterbury, you know, in his area where he lives, he would always have an axe. Whereas in, in the high desert where I live, an axe and felling trees is not really that big of an issue for me. So I would rather have a really good saw, um, a good belt knife, um, because there's a lot of mountain lions and, and small brown bears around, especially where I might end up going. Um, I have a, a tactical type fighting knife that uh, can actually pierce through soft metal and Kevlar. So I think it would be good for defense with a, a furry creature that wanted to rip my face off. And then, uh, you know, some really, maybe one other really good knife. Machetes don't do too well with the hardwoods like mesquite and stuff. So I, I would still default back to a really good saw. So in my bug out bag, I'm going to have a good saw. Um, my EDC carry, I always have a pocket knife. Um, some 15 in one credit card tools. They're not all that great, but they're handy. Um, I usually have quite a bit of beef jerky in there because I'm a meat eater and not a plant eater. Um, so a lot of beef jerky, some pork rinds. Um, I have a few really good canteens. And then I have um, some Berkey water purifiers that I can use to to fill up and drink from. I also have a big Berkey that I carry around with me. It's, well, it's not big, it's, it's about that big. Actually, it's just a little bigger than like a coffee cup and it'll filter a lot of water. I can keep that in my, my bag. I don't always plan on bugging out because uh, if we have that much time to bug out, then maybe we could do something else. Um, if you see it coming, then you should probably duck so hopefully I would have a little bit more gear with me. But if I had to just grab a bag, um, that's what I would have, some food, some tools. Um, I have extra clothes in there and another pair of boots, um, dry socks and wool and stuff like that. And it's all stuffed in there because being warm is important to me. And then uh, I, would, uh, I would have to grab my guns out of my gun safe, probably be a pistol and and probably just a 22 and a shotgun that me and my wife could lug around with us and some ammo for that and then hopefully we could come back if we, if we can't then all that stuff is lost along with all of our beans band-aids and bullets but at least we're alive so i don't have a list it kind of changes a lot depending on the climate and the weather and if it's winter or summer but that that's what i keep in what i call a bug out bag um, it's more of my backpack and I keep that with my wife's backpack and all of our camping gear away from the house. So if, if we could, you know, get to there and get into that, then that would be all of our camping equipment, which camping equipment is really prepping equipment. And so I could kind of sort through it if I had time and, and get the hell out of Dodge. Uh, what medicines or antibiotics do you carry if you do carry any? Um, I don't have any ailments. I'm 64 this year. I, I take no medications and I owe that to my diet. I've preached about that for years that if you can, if you can get on a good diet and you can get your health right, then that eliminates a lot of those problems. And so I don't need any. Um, <clears throat> in my first aid kit, I got some, you know, triple antibiotic uh, ointment and stuff like that. Aspirin, I, I, what I do is take uh, the McDonald's straws or the bigger ones, like I think Circle K and some of the convenience stores uh, for the slushies, they're a little bit fatter of a straw. And then usually I, I put, you know, four or five aspirin in there and then I melt the ends closed and then I, that way it kind of stores them, hopefully. Um, so I have some of that. 
Um, not real good at first aid. I'm not trained in any of that. So I, I keep what I would need, you know, the typical usual shit like band-aids and stuff. But if it was a real trauma situation, I would pretty much be screwed. But I, I don't have time to learn all of that. Um, so no medications. If I had someone with me that was uh, going to be with me and I knew that during a bug out, then I would have gone camping with them quite a bit if they're younger and I would know their needs so I would have any medicine that they needed but I don't keep it in my bag because that stuff's kind of time sensitive so if they were here I would grab their medications. Now the question is would it be best to have others to meet up with if possible like safety in numbers? Uh, maybe. Uh, I'm not a lone wolf but I'm definitely a gray man type thinker and I don't play well with others especially in a in a kind of a shit hit the fan situation because people start bickering really fast um, there is uh, my wife uh, my brother I've discussed that with him and he's not going to leave anywhere he's going to stay and defend this castle but there is there is a window in there of opportunity when you got to just bail for a while because you got to let police do their job and try to keep um, law and order. And so in that interim, I want to be away from the problem. So that way I don't become classified as a vigilante. So I don't think there would be too many people joining up with me. A lot of my family that live um, out of the area, probably three to four hour drive. So they know what area I'll be in. I told them in a few areas and they said, well, I'll be here, here or here, depending on what's more convenient. Um, so that they could meet up with me, but I, I don't have a team. I, I'm not a, a team player. And so I, 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 I don't. And a lot of people do. And that would be great if you had a team you could trust. But odds are you're going to be on your own for a while. So you you're better off being prepared for not meeting up with them and because of situations and circumstances. But if you do, then great. Then now you're you're in better in a better place. This one's about water. Water. What is your long term plan for water? Um, that's a tricky one. Uh, most areas do have a lot of water and Les Stroud has said for years that you don't always have to boil the water if it's in a stream. And he says that most of his survival treks and with groups that he's been out training, they just drink straight from the river. And he goes, never had a problem with that. As long as you, you know, are keeping an eye on things. Like if, if you see a dead, dead animal up the stream a ways, then yeah, you might want to walk past it and then drink from the water. But for the most part, um, nature has a pretty good way of keeping things clean. Now, if it was stagnant and all that, then like I say, I have uh, the Berkey's and, and I have uh, water tablets and um, I have a way to boil it with me at all times, at least in my, my pack. So, you know, long term, a lot of the mountains around here, even though I'm in Arizona, do have water springs and such. So... Uh, we're not as arid and barren as you would think because we're lower than Mexico. So the entire country of Mexico drains into Arizona and California and parts of uh, New Mexico and Texas. But mostly in Arizona because of the way the aquifers run under Mexico. Um, a lot of other states drain into Arizona. The water is exceedingly deep and uh, hard to get to, but there are springs if you know where they're at and stuff. And that's, you know, part of hiking and knowing your area. So that's my long term goal is to probably hope for the best. You know, I'll have water with me, but how long you can't carry that much water. So. All right. Another question is when prepping, where should you suggest people start? And, and this is my my favorite question. Um, and, it, and it goes along with the next question that I'll answer and then that I'll give Joel a break. Um, his other question is, what is your favorite part of prepping? So those two combine. I usually tell people that are, are newbies or beginning or confused or 
just like, what the hell is this prepping shit all about? I, I tell people just start going camping because really if you're, if you have to bug out, you're camping, you know, you're not at home anymore. So you're camping. So I tell people go camping, you know, um, take a weekend every once in a while and just go camping with the group, the family, whoever's with you that you would have to bug out with. And, and when you're out camping, you will see the needs of your children or your teammates, children, um, what they like and what they don't like, their comfort zone and their not comfort zone. And you start zeroing in on what the needs would be for the group. Um, somebody might have real privacy or a shy bladder issue and they can't pee around other people. These are all things you start learning as you're out camping. And then you can start, you know, collecting that stuff to where you add it to your camping stuff. And if you're out camping and one of your kids gets stung by a bumblebee or a bee and you find out that they, you know, that they're allergic and they start having anaphylactic shock symptoms, you, you can get in your car and go home. It's not the end of the world because you're just camping. There's usually park rangers around. So start small and, and camp in areas where there are maybe park rangers and people around that, you know, aren't crazy. And then you, you really start learning what is needed. And then I tell people, you know, practice a skill when you go camping, like uh, watch a bunch of videos before you go camping and, and learn how to make a fire and, and learn four or five ways to make a fire. You know, just even using a lighter is not always that easy if you haven't learned the fundamentals of fire building. So practice that. Learn, you know, use a bic, use a, a ferrocium rod, um, try throwing sparks off of your high carbon knife and just play around. You're camping, big deal. If it works, awesome. If it doesn't, you know, grab your propane torch and light that shit up and eat dinner. But at least you're out camping and you can, you can practice your skills and then you go home and then you, you continue to work on it until the world does end. And you'd be surprised how much residual information you gather just from a, a nice camp trip, um, you know, with the family or friends or just even by yourself, you, you start learning needs. And that's really the important part of survival or prepping is, is the needs of, of the many and yours. So that's my favorite part about being prepping is you, you end up with a lot of really cool camp equipment and really cool gear. I, I'm not a, a a world, you know, war type prepper. I, I'm, I'm going to take care of me and mine. And so my favorite part is just getting useful gear that if the world doesn't end, I can still go camping, have really nice equipment and, and learn as I go. Cause you never know the, the end of the world, as you know, it might happen. Um, you might be flying home from a business trip and the plane decides to not stay in the air. And, and, it, and it crashes or lands and you survive it, but you're the only one out there and they were way off course, you know, kind of like cast away or whatever. And that's the end of the world as you know it, but you're still alive. So you're, the gear you have on you, which will be hard because you've gone through TSA, so they pretty much strip searched you and anything that you could use in survival has been taken from you. But if you have your wits and you have good boots, or good shoes, even if you work in an office, you can wear um, like shoes like lugs and stuff that are very acceptable in business, but you could walk 20 miles in them. Um, get wool clothing, it looks nice, it definitely makes a fashion statement in the business world, but yet it will keep you warmer than all the fancy shit that you can buy, especially cottons and, and blends. Wool is by far the best survival base layer you will ever have. So that'll be the stuff you'll have, and that'll be the end of the world as you knew it for a while. And you might not get rescued, so you're going to have to think your way out of it, plan your way out of it. You're going to have to walk maybe, and you're going to need to learn to know how to be careful and to, to not slip and fall or do stupid things to where you get hurt, and you'll make it out alive. And so that's why I prep. It, it's more of a 
just life can happen. You know, bad things happen to good people. I think we're all good people. Doesn't mean bad things can't happen. So just be prepared for surviving one day at a time. If you make it one day, then odds are you're going to make it the second day even better. By the time a week's gone by, you have a week's experience. And now the next week will be easier until you get rescued. If the world has ended and there's no rescue, then have some skills how to build a really good shelter and hunker down through a winter or start building a cabin or start hunting because the world has ended. So, you know, there's a lot of houses available when the world ends. So it's not going to be that far hard to find a nice house. So those are my questions to Mark, guys. Let me know in the comment section below if you found this a bit different and a bit more enjoyable. I'm going to try to get a, a few more bushcrafters on board and we can do a bit more, you know, bushcraft-based questions on this and um, make it a bit more interesting, a bit mixed up a bit more, just, you know, constant gear reviews and subscription box reviews and stuff like that. Uh, I'll try to get some more preppers known, you know, like, you know, Facebook well-known preppers kind of thing. Uh, I doubt anybody uh, really famous is going to try to bother with this but you know just mix it up a little bit but thanks guys for watching please like and subscribe and don't forget to check out facebook group prepper in the woods and also my instagram account all the links will be in the description box below thanks guys for watching i'll catch you next video bye